Hey guys, what's up? It's me, I'm Shrink, and today we're going to be taking care of a 2005 Toyota Highlander. I'm going to be checking the condition of the brakes. This is my sister's vehicle. Um, I decided to offer to take care of her brakes, or at least to see what condition they're in. So, you're going to need a 21mm socket on the lug nuts. Jacked up the car, I got the e-brake on already. Okay, whoever is doing her tires is a fucking idiot. I have a 161 foot-pound torque uh, impact wrench, and it's having a hard time removing these. So someone is doing way too much torque on these at the Toyota dealership. All right, tires off. This is her braking system hub and everything else under the sun. Let's see what we got, what the camera angle looks like. Okay, we're going to be removing this bolt and that bolt. For right now, I want to take a quick peek inside and see the condition of certain things. Here is CV boot one and another one in here. They look okay, they're not ripped or anything, that's good, it's a good sign. Here's a joint, that seems good. This is not looking that good. This is starting to tear. That is a rubber area that helps this whole piece swing up and down. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, that's, that's gonna be gone soon. She's gonna be getting clunking on this area very soon. Every bump. Tranny mount is fine. This whole piece is gonna have to be changed. It connects there, it connects here, and it connects on the bottom there as well. But this does not look good. These rubber pieces look fine. Brake line looks up. All right, guys, we're gonna try to get away with just this bolt, see if we can rock this caliper back. All right. The bolt is out. Now, I don't wanna, I don't wanna play the lazy game. All right, we're just gonna remove both screws and remove this whole caliper out of the way. And inspect the pads that way. They look like they got pretty good meat from this end of the business. This happens because I just parked the car and pushed the brakes nice and firm. So it's nice and firm. <laughs> so sometimes it takes a little bit of wiggling. Ah, all right, there we go. Now here's the caliper. This is your caliper piston. Once you push the brakes, fluid comes down in, pushes it that way. It begins to grip the brake pads, which are right here. I'm gonna plop this out of the way. When you put it aside, make sure it's not going to fall and make sure it's not going to tear the brake line. Very important. That's going to be a bad day. All right. All right, you take a flathead screwdriver and gently begin to work it in between the pad 
and this rotor. You don't want to score anything and scratch it. Nice and even pressure on both sides and it'll eventually start slipping out. If you do it too cockeyed, you're going to jam it in there. So nice and even pressure on the bottom and the top. There's your pad. Looks like my brother-in-law put EBC green stuff, if I'm not mistaken. They look like they're colored green. It looks like they have about half of their life left. Maybe even 60%. They're in pretty good condition. But this hole here is filled with crap already. Get your screwdriver in there or a nice wire brass brush. Don't breathe this junk in. Clean it out just like that. That's a nice clean groove you got there now. And now this will help to cool the pad and it'll help get rid of any dust that begins to collect. This will stop the squealing and things like that. So it's nice to collect or uh, clean this crevice here. And try not to touch the pad with dirty hands, try not to touch it with um, greasy gloves, things like that. It's going to make for a little harder of a braking surface for you. Now right, let's get the rear pad out and inspect it. Again, nice and even pressure, nothing too stiff, nothing too hard. You don't want to score anything. Back one. I would say is in better condition than the front one. Yep. So this doesn't even really need any cleaning. It's nice and clean. The pad surface is in good condition. It is a little bit scored actually, right on the tip. Can you guys see that on the camera or not? See that line that's going right up top here? Something might have gotten stuck between the braking surfaces. Rotor seems all right. Strange. Maybe a little trunk got stuck between the rotor and this and scored this. Well, that's all right. You'll, you'll never have a perfectly smooth rotor and you'll never have a perfectly smooth pad. It's going to be rough, so that's normal. These little rubber boots here seem in good condition. All this rust buildup, that's fine. It's, uh, it's you know, it's going to happen. You're running through puddles and all over the damn place. And, uh, caliper itself is really rusted the boot seems okay you want to inspect this boot here make sure it's not leaking anything if it's leaking it's brake fluid you're gonna be in a boatload of trouble I would never put on a leaking caliper back on anything and just do yourself a, a favor it's gonna be really dirty with lots of dust oh you guys can't see that <laughs> alright it's gonna be uh, really dirty lots of loose dust just take your screwdriver and clean it out and you're going to see it all falling out. Just don't breathe this stuff in. It's, it's toxic crap. Get as much loose crap out as you can because it's going to cause squeaking. That's what's going to cause scoring if it gets trapped between the braking surfaces. Um, a good spray brake cleaner works, and I'll grab that right now. I have a, a very generic in-house brand AutoZone brake cleaner spray. Just spray that in there. get rid of a lot of this junk that's built up around get rid of my impact from that area you want to do this I would say at least once a year maybe every six months inspect your braking system you don't want to send your wife and kids out on a car that's slowly failing and that can go bad in any day you kind of want preventative maintenance beforehand. That's my opinion, at least, of it. So, that looks pretty good to me. Uh, it is really rusted in, in this piston here. I'm sure you guys can see that. I hope so. And uh, we're going to lubricate the mating surfaces between this and the pads. Just use the appropriate brake lube. And her little nipple here for the uh, braking fluid draining valve is torn already. It's 
it seats weathered away. That should be replaced, but that's like a couple cents. It's not a big deal. I'm also going to clean the shims to prevent any squeaking. Once you get rid of any loose rust there, it's gonna not squeak as much. Even if it didn't squeak, it will be squeaking. So you wanna clean it out. Same thing on the back of the pads. Spraying down with some brake cleaner. Get rid of the gunk, get rid of the rust stains the best you can. If you want, take a wire brush, scrub them nice and clean. Um, it's not a bad idea, it can't hurt. Uh, I just have a lot more work ahead of me, so I'm, uh, I already reassembled everything. When you're putting your lug nuts back on, you always start them by hand, first and foremost, nice and easy by hand. Uh, you work in a star pattern, and you gently put it on increasing the torque every step, you know, every uh, circumference around. So if you blast this one on first, the tire is going to be lopsided. You have to put it on nice and easy, adjust it nice and easy, maybe lift it up with your foot, you know, kick it around, position it, take a wrench, just by hand, nice and easy, put it on until you feel resistance. Then go to the next cross one until you feel resistance. If we, I put this one on first, I put this one on the second, I'm going to be coming back down to this one. Put it on by hand to make sure you don't cross thread anything. If there's no resistance, keep going. You could use a uh, socket just to for a nice finger extension until you feel resistance. We're going to then go to this one. By hand first, put it on. This way you guarantee not to put this wheel on wobbly and lopsided. And you guarantee not to cross thread anything because that would end up costing you a new stud and a new socket or a new lug nut and then we're going to of course go on to the opposite side just like so now if you guys noticed in the beginning of the video I had a hard time removing these socket or these lug nuts somebody at the dealership obviously is using the impact wrench without a torque extension all right or they just don't understand how to judge torque yet. They are obviously a newbie, somebody who just started removing tires, changing oil. Uh, it's common, it happens, they get eight, nine, ten bucks an hour. You can't expect much more out of them. So the way to do it without a torque wrench, I have one, I just don't know what this car requires. I wouldn't put more than a hundred foot pounds of torque on this, on this type of vehicle. It is a Highlander, it's not a massive truck. They Trucks usually require 125. Uh, sedans with alloy rims usually require anywhere between 70 to 90 so I wouldn't do more than a hundred this one was definitely more than hundred and sixty because my torque wrench is hundred sixty seven foot-pounds of torque and it had a very hard time removing four out of the five lug nuts so you're gonna make sure again by hand nice and tight and to go around nice and tight to the opposite one opposite one hand tight nice and tight hand tight nice and tight check check now we're going to use our wrench or whatever it is you're using and do the final tightness start wherever you want really brief opposite side really brief opposite side really brief opposite side same thing here same thing there you can judge by the writing on it I purposely will uh, use a marker or a paint marker and we'll color in the letters this way I can see it moving it's easier to see versus just black letters that are not colored in. Now, we did probably, I would say, about 50 foot-pounds of torque on them right now. We're going to go one more time and give it another brief second, ensuring that this is not moving anymore. And it's done. Once it's done, that's it. Somebody at the dealership would rather you drive home and make sure his work is never questioned until it's time to remove the wheel. This way he knows this thing will never fall off, so he doesn't care. Because odds are, if you go to the dealership to do basic service, you're going to come back anyway for the stud. And they'll make up some bullshit lie saying it's your fault somehow or another because, I don't know, you use an iPod or some nonsense or you hit a pothole too hard. So that's how you properly torque these on if you don't have a torque wrench. I do have a torque wrench, but like I said, I don't know exactly what this is on. Uh, I've got so many years tooling that I pretty much know exactly how to operate this thing and what it's going to give me based upon how many seconds of of uh, impact 
So, all right, guys, we're going to move on to the other side, and I'll show you maybe a little bit more in detail a couple of things, how to reapply the caliper back on the uh, braking system. Thanks, guys, for joining me. Just hang tight. All right, guys, we're on the other side now. This is the passenger side. Technically called the right side. We're going to remove these lug nuts. That was fine. That was all right. That was better. That was good. That was great. All right. Somebody did right on this side of the car, at least. <coughs> Move the wheel. Set it off to the side. Okay, passenger side area. Do a quick inspection of the boots, the CV boots. Fine, that one's fine, nothing leaking. Her belt, it looks okay. Actually in pretty good condition. Probably was changed recently. Rack and pinion boot, fine. This one's also in the same condition as the last one, a little torn. Uh, this rubber boots are fine, these rubber boots are fine. All these connecting rods are fine, the strut looks okay. Um, <clears throat> this rubber boot looks all right. All right, so we're going to use our 14 mil socket one more time to remove this caliper here. Now when you jack your car, don't forget to put on the e-brake, please. That's just, should be standard, but I guess not everybody knows. Oh, dust sucks. Don't breathe that shit in. It's cancerous, it's bad. <laughs> bad news for you guys. Excellent. Both bolts are out. And this one slid off nice and easy, actually, compared to the other one. All right, this caliper, also pretty dirty, rusty, but the boot looks in good condition. Nothing is leaking. That's the most important part. Uh, brake systems will always rust, no matter how well you take care of them, no matter what you do. That's just the nature of the beast. So if you see this rust, not a big deal. We're just going to remove the major loose parts of it. So it does not get stuck between the pad and the rotor and cause unnecessary scoring. And just build up along the piston as well. Be careful with the rubber boot. It is just a little piece of rubber. You do not want to crack that or rip it. Very important. Try to remove as much of this junk as possible. Uh, hose looks all right for the brake line. I'm going to spray this down. Now brake cleaner is safe for all the rubber parts, you don't have to worry about it. It's, it's the carb cleaner that gets nasty. That's the stuff you don't want near rubber. It will eat it up almost instantly. Brake cleaner is designed for this. These pads, wow, these are not coming out nice and easy. This one's out. Nice 60% of life left. The vent area is nice and clear, which is nice. I'll still give it a quick run through with the flathead. Nice, good, no scoring. I mean, nothing really major, so that's good. That's a good sign. And this pad's out very easy as well. Also, similar scoring pattern up top here. You notice that's very strange. I don't know if that's something uh, that's normal for Toyota or not. It's very weird. This pad is also great condition, about, wow, 60, 70% of life left. This is good. These must be a year or so old, not even. Um, yeah, very good condition pads. Nothing's missing. You know, nothing's chipped off the sides. Good condition. So we're just going to clean them up real quick. Spray them down with the brake cleaner. Relube the contact spots. Get rid of the grime. Clean the shims. Spray them off like that. Let it nice and dry. Oh, 
probably give the piston one more good squirt. Looks good to me. We'll give this a minute to dry and I'll be right back and show you how to put the pads in, how to put these little bolts in that we took off, where to lubricate the little contact points. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. You see the circle? That's for this piston. It's where they make contact, so this is the inside pad. This is the uh, fingers, these right here. That's the outside pad. Piston's always on the inside. Pardon me. Um, even though these do have shims, these metal shiny spots, it's still good to put a little bit of lube on it. It helps to keep them from overheating and, and making almost like a permanent bond with one another. It keeps things uh, a little quieter as well. So some brake lube or any kind of lube that you feel is comfortable with your experience to put on. Uh, brake lube is very cheap in any auto parts store. It's usually a little orange bottle about this big. Um, this looks like it has lube between the shim and the pad, which is fine. It's good. It's where it's really supposed to be. Um, I like to put some on here just to keep things from seizing and rusting up like that. Because if it rusts and it makes a contact that's permanent, it's going to be difficult and you're going to start dragging a pad and you're going to start hearing that strange sound every time you make a turn to the left or to the right you can hear this dragging along and uh, it's going to be an uneven wear either on the edges or on the bottom or the top or wherever it is that it made that bond so all right now that everything's dry i'm going to put on a rubber glove and i'll be right back all right guys i'm back we're going to loop the contact spots where everything makes a contact with the piston and the fingers here and these areas as well because they sit in the shims and if something's making a noise it's going to vibrate throughout the whole braking system it's going to be awful so i use a strange little blue no name grease that is very high temp it's a brake grease just i mean very tiny amounts you don't want a lot you don't want this dribbling down and make getting on the rotors just where you see areas make a contact it's a high temp grease it's made to withstand the extreme temperatures the brakes work under very light coat nothing more because if it's going to run it's going to be a bad day for you um, and it's going to embed itself uh, into the rotor and the pads it's a very very light you don't want any clumps anywhere. Get rid of them. All right, that's good enough for me. Just a very light, as long as your finger slides around and nothing's clumped, you're good to go on this area. Then you're gonna take uh, one pad at a time. And once again, very lightly on the edge that sits right in there. You don't want it to vibrate and hum or make any kind of noises. Um, you'll probably not find this extra step in the FSM, the Field Service Manual, but after years and years and years of working on cars, this is, I found, to be very useful. It'll help you make sure your pads go in easy and come out, and it keeps the vibrations, which is technically the noise down, squeaking. That gets pretty annoying. Okay, this is the outside pad. Here's the inside pad. I'm going to do a similar, very light, and like I said, very, very light. You don't want any of this running uh, anywhere. Just enough to coat the area, because it's not going anywhere. Once it's greased, it's done. It's, uh... Okay. And again, just check the area one more time to make sure it's nice and slippery. And you should be good to go. Yep. Okay, that's good enough for me. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put this stuff back in. I'll show you exactly how to put it back in. It's very simple, nothing major. Okay. All right, so you see the fingers here? That's the outside pad. You're going to pop that in. Nice and easy. See how easy that goes in once it's looped? That's how it's going to be coming out, which is very important. You know what's strange about these pads? Is none of them have the wear indicator that's going to purposely make noise once the pads are low. 
there's usually a little metal prong that will be sticking up on the side somewhere either on this side or it's going to be sticking up on that side and once this gets to a certain threshold it's going to make noise to squeak it's going to start scoring this rotor as the rotor spinning and that's supposed to let you know that it's low this one for some reason does not have that either it's missing from right there I see some indents where I believe it belongs or these are some kind of high performance pads that don't have them that noise indicator so you're supposed to be checking these on your own schedule that you know is right for your particular driving uh, style so that that's kind of something to think about if you don't see that little metal bar it's gonna be just a, a strange little tinfoil looking thing that sticks up on the side here it's supposed to let you know strange okay well I'll let my sister know and her husband know about that and make sure you get the back one in right it's a little strange awkward position to get in and stick your head right in there make sure the pad goes in its appropriate slots and you're going to know what's right because it's going to match up. It's going to look even. Not, not, not a single pad is going to be in too deep or out too far. So once they're in, squeeze them in nice and tight. Your job is done. Put your caliper gently back on. Don't jam anything. Okay. This was nice and easy. This was a good one. All right, guys. I'm going to show you how to put these on, these, these silver bolts back in. I'm going to move you in a little bit closer. You're going to notice these bolts are these... Uh, these retainers for the screw for the bolts they're not perfectly around they have a flat edge to them I, I know you can see that it mates up with that all right okay just had to finagle something really quickly um, sometimes you'll need a rubber mallet nothing metal because you don't want to bang this and destroy it but you're gonna have to prop it up a little bit and take your silver screw that we took out with the 14 mil socket was it yes 14 put it back in prop up your caliper and by hand try to get it in there it can be a little struggle sometimes especially with these shorter bolts all right mine is in yep it's in and take your other one and you'll probably have to finagle the bottom one as well a little bit just making sure that the retainer for the bolt is with that flat spot on the actual caliper itself yep mine's nice mine's in all right with these you don't go back in with an impact wrench you're going to start them by hand like i just did and then go in with your ratchet a hand ratchet because you want to make sure that they go in right you go in blasting these soft things with the cal with the impact wrench, and you're asking for trouble. All right. Usually, these are about 32 to 35 foot pounds of torque. That's about probably 25 I just did by hand so I'm gonna go into this one work it in this is the bottom one that I'm working on here that's about probably 35 I would say all right these are good to go I know they're about 35 I'm gonna give them a very tiny amount of impact nothing more just to ensure they're in that's it. This caliper is done. Okay. Excellent. All right, our job here is done. Just put the wheel back on. Let me move the camera back. I'll show you again how to do that. All righty, guys. Let's get the wheel back in this area. Wheel your wheel back in. Mallet. Line up your your uh, studs with the holes in the rim. Wiggle it and look in. It's going to be flush with the rotor. That is on. Start them by hand, like I explained before. 
once it's in by hand. Take your socket. I'm using a 21 mil socket by hand until it's flush. You might need to jiggle the wheel a little bit because you can feel it sitting in properly. That's what, that's why they are angled. See that? It's supposed to go into the hole. It's, it, you know, it's supposed to go inward into the hole. It's not just a flat uh, surface. Go to the opposite side. Use your socket if you must. Nice and snug. The wheel shouldn't be moving at this point, even by hand. Go to your opposite end, by hand. Use your socket if you must. By hand, nice and tight. Opposite end. Nice and tight by hand. And the final opposite one. Now we can use our impact. Okay. Now that we gave it a quick burst, we're going to be checking, make sure these letters are not moving. Once they stop moving, it's done. Done. Job here is done. Thanks guys for watching. It's I'm Stricken for another webisode of DIY stuff. Uh, subscribe, comment, rate below. Let me know what you think. Let me know how you do your job. Um, and I'll be around for some other cool cars. Thanks guys.